Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub, and it's time of the week again for another STM32 tutorial. In today's tutorial, I am going to talk to you about connecting an STM board to a PC terminal or a PC application. It is one of the most required skills for embedded application uh, to connect your application MCU to a PC for control or monitoring purposes. And the core skill learned here is using UART DMA. That's what I'm going to do well in today's tutorial because it's a very important skill to be able to connect your STM to a PC over UART. All right. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate two parts. The first part will show you how to send in fixed size commands to an STM to turn an LED on and off. And on the second part, will do you a more advanced way of communication and that is sending dynamic size commands and data. All right, so let me show you how the demo will look like before I get started. The first part demo will look something like this. So I reset my STM and I'm starting a UART communication. And what I need to do is I need to send in fixed size commands and the command goes like this. I first need to send in a star and then my uh, command and then a um, hash right and the number for this according to the ascii table is for a star it's 42 uh, is 42 in decimal and for a hash is a 35 so i need to send in 42 and then the end 35 and the middle number would be my command and i program my steam so that when i send in zero it will turn the led off and when i send in one it will turn the led on and anything else will be invalid so let me start with a zero and when i send this as a number it says led turned off indeed i'm sending one is led turned on um, so the first one is turning led off and the second one led on so when i send in anything else so let's say uh, three it says it's an invalid command sure enough and the second part demo will be more advanced so the second part would be um, i send in dynamic size not just commands of fixed size so that's 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 how it's going to look let me compile it and load it to the board really quickly so that i demonstrate and then i'll take you in details on how you implement such code all right so on the terminal Reset my STM is starting in the same way, but this time I'm going to send dynamic size commands. So I'm going to send LED on. Um, and the way this program works is that I first need to send in an initiator fixed size uh, message, which sends the size of the next command. So LED on is a six bytes command. So I need to send in the same thing, but with six. And when I send it as a number, it says send me your command. So it's open to send me a command. And now when I send this, it says LED turned on. And now I want to send LED off, which is seven bytes. I first need to send in this. This will allow the STM to open up a uh, UART DMA buffer for my command. So this is a very useful way to communicate with a PC. So let's say you're sending some data to the STM. Well, let's say, so now it's LED off is working. Anything else will be invalid until I send this. So let's say you're sending some very, very long data you want to store to the STM. All you got to do with this type is to open up a UR to receive of, let's say, 35 bytes, assuming these are 35 bytes, and then the STM will uh, receive them and process them. All right. All right. So that's enough introduction, I believe. Let's get started and show you how to implement these two demos. You'll find it very useful for your uh, PC application or the STM. The first step, as usual, is to open QMX and set up a project. So click on access to board selector. I'm going to be using the Nucleo of four board for my demo today. So uh, on the search part, uh, it's the 32, it's, sorry, the Nucleo F401RE. It's this particular one. I don't want to initialize the peripherals. Uh, the first thing we'll look on the pen out is I'm going to disable all the unnecessary ones and enable mine um, my, myself. So pen out, clear all the pen outs. Uh, I want to enable my LED, which is on PA5. Let's say to buy output, I'll give it a label, call it LED, and I'll enable the onboard uh, push button too, and that should be to buy your input, and I'll call it button. And I need to enable uh, PA2 and PA3 as my UR2. So that's UR2TX and UR2RX, 
Um, and now I need to go to connectivity and enable UR2 peripheral and set it to a synchronous mode. And indeed, this got mapped out to be A2 and VA3, just like what I expect. And what's nice about the new Clio 4, this particular board, is that UR2 is physically mapped to the ST-Link COM port. So just by plugging your ST into the PC, you will see a COM port appearing in your PC terminals. All right. So next thing I need to do, I'll keep the board rate the same. I will enable a receive DMA. In most application, you just need the DMA on the receive side. You, you rarely need it on the uh, transmit side. So I enable an RX DMA. Uh, data width is byte, just like what I want, and mode is normal. All right, now let me double check the clock configuration. It's a maximum clock speed, I'm happy with it, um, and I don't need to enable anything else. That's enough for my demo today. So let's go to project manager. I want to store my project in here. I'm going to call it UART DMA tutorial because this one is all about UART DMA on the receive side. And my IDE is QL V5 and click generate code. Uh, and while the code is generating, as always, for any of my business contacts, you can get in touch with me through uh, mutexembeddedsolutions.com. Okay, source code is generated successfully. Click on open project. And this will take you to your IDE. All right, and on here, the first thing we'll do is that we're gonna leave the project compiling while we're adding our source code. Uh, so open up the main, main.c, and I've got a guide here. So for this tutorial, the first thing I wanna add to the project is the printf functionality. As you saw in my printf tutorial video that I shared recently, uh, you need to add this line of code at the very beginning of your project to enable use of printf with UR2. So I'm going to add it here and I also need to end, add in the function definition of my printf. So that will go in begin number four. And what this will do is that instead of me using hull UR transmit for sending any data to the terminal, I just can use printf. So as simple as printf hello world. So for example, in begin number two, I can just do now printf uh, and also to be able to use printf, I forget to add a very important header, and that's the standard I.O. So on your include, um, write include stdio.h to be able to use printf. All right, now I can use printf. So in the beginning, beginning number two, I want to send in um, like starting my application, for example. And now when I compile and run the code, I expect to see uh, starting my application in my terminal. So let me, let's try that. It would be a very nice way to start the program. So let's compile the code again. Uh, and load it to the board. I already have got my nuclear board connected to my PC. Um, and let's go open up a terminal. And pretty much the only USB com board connected is my stealing, and that's on COM15. I know the board rate is 115200. Let me change that and reset my STM. And sure enough, I got starting my application message appeared here. So we know everything is going all right. Okay, so that's the first step. And then uh, the next on our step is to define a UART state machine. It's just as simple as a simple type diff. So that allows us to swap between two states. But for the first part, we don't quite need it. Um, so I'm going to ignore it for this part and get back to it in part number two. Um, and then we need to define our UART receive callback so that we handle any message received. So the first thing I'll do is that in bigger number two, I know that my application is based on fixed size, fixed size command, fixed size commands of three bytes, the one I show you early. So three bytes, all I need is to send in a star and then my um, command in here and then followed by a hash okay so that's my command for this all I need is to open up a receive DMA with three bytes so let's do this so that will be hull uart sorry so this will be hull uart receive with the DMA and I need to pass in my uart handle it's it uart2 and then the uh, receive buffer. So I'll define an Rx buffer at the top here. Uh, it's a character buffer perhaps, um, and I'll call it Rx buffer of size, let's say 25 maximum. My application is very short, so 25 bytes is more than enough. 
um, and I want to pass it here as a pointer. But I'll type cast it to unsigned 8 because a function expects an unsigned 8 pointer instead of a character pointer. But both use the same memory map or memory uh, structure, so it's the same. And I am receiving three bytes as my initiator message or my command. All right, so this will, uh, as soon as we start the program, um, UR Team A will start listening for three bytes. As soon as it receives the three bytes, it's going to jump into the UART RX callback, this particular function. And we can find it under functions, and we go to the UART driver, UART to see, we'll find a function called RX complete callback, this one. We need to copy it over to our main without this weak object and we can use it there whenever we receive a three bytes and uh, put our uh, UART handling mechanism there. All right, and what I want to do here is do a very basic uh, check, just like what I have in my demo. So if the, I will first want to check the first byte and the third byte. If, the, if it's equal to the star and hash, then I know the middle will be the correct one. And then I'll check for the middle. If it's one, then I'll turn LED on. If it's zero, I'll turn it off. Anything else is just an invalid, and then I'll reopen my DMA receive of a three byte. So let me show you how it's done. So first thing is to check my, um, check the command message. If it contains um, my expected data, um, so my Rx buffer, I want to check if it contains my data. So if Rx buffer of zero is equal to um, star and so, uh, this is a Boolean operation um, and Rx buffer of two, the third elements in the array is equal to hash, then I know that I receive a valid um, command. So I'll implement the rest here um, of success. Otherwise, if I didn't receive the command in the following format, then I know there is something wrong. I'll just ignore it and start listening for another, for a new three bytes. So I'm going to copy this code again to there to start another UART uh, receive. All right. Um, Okay, well, basically, I can do that anyway. Um, so if this is a success, um, then I'll check for the command. So if command is equal to zero, then turn LED off. And then if command is equal to one, I want to turn LED on. Okay, symbol as this. So I just need to do a quick if check. So if my Rx buffer of one is equal to, so if this one is equal to zero, then I want to turn LED off. So um, I'm going to turn my LED off. So hull TBIO right bin, and I gave it a label. I label it in Kubernetes as LED, so I'll see it appear on here. So LED port and LED pin, and I want to set this to TBIO pin uh, reset to um, turn it off. Uh, I'm going to print something off to the terminal so that user know that I turned the LED off. Uh, I'm just going to say LED turned off. All right. And on the other condition, if it's equal to one, I'll turn the LED on. So if this one is equal to one, I'm going to say LED is turned on. I put this uh, in a uppercase letter instead. All right, and I'll set the LED on. Okay, so, and anything else, I'm gonna send a, an invalid. So this one need to be an else if. And anything else, if the command is anything different, then it's an invalid command. So I'm just gonna print something off to the terminal, to the user saying that it's a, an invalid, invalid command. All right. Um, and then, Whatever the three bytes are, correct one or incorrect, I want to start to start listening for another for new commands anyway. So I don't need the other else. So as simple as this. So let's compile it, load it to the board, and I'll demonstrate. And it should look exactly similar to what I show you in the in the in the beginning. All right. So back to the terminal. Uh, it's already open. I'll reset my STM. All right. All right, something wrong happened. Let me just double check again. One moment. I have my printf 
and I've got my DMA receive and the RX buffer are three bytes and it's indeed three bytes and then I do have my application and the RX complete callback where I do if this one right okay so this one need to be if it's of one instead so this is uh, the first uh, I'm, so I'm receiving three bytes so the first byte is a star uh, and the uh, third one is the hash and the middle one is my command so rx buffer of one that you're looking for not of zero because i'm going to receive the data in the following format a star and then a number and then a, a hash so i'm looking for index number one here all right so let me compile it load it to the board again and hopefully this time it's going to work All right, great. So back into the terminal. Let me reopen it. Reset my STM. Sure enough, starting my application. Now let me send them the command as I expect. So according to the ASCII table, uh, I'm sending the a star and hash as numbers here, not as a characters. And they are uh, it's equivalent to 42 in decimal and 35 respectively. So 42 turning LED on and 35. So sending those as numbers. Great, LED turned on. So I know that my command is successful and it got to here. And now let's do uh, an invalid one for the sake of testing. So for, sure enough, it says it's an invalid command and it started listening for other commands immediately. And now let me turn my LED off. And, I, and, and in fact, I can see my LED, my green LED came on. So now it's turning it off and it's um, indeed turned off. All right, so that's the first part of the tutorial. This is just a basic of sending a fixed size command. And you can change the size of the commands here. So in my demo, I'm just using three bytes command, but you can use five, 10, 1100 bytes, whatever you want to use. All right, so that's the first part, very, very basic one. Now, let me show you the second part where we can send in dynamic size commands and also data, right? So to do that, I'm going to um, add my state machine that changes between an initiator message and a uh, data or command message, just like what you saw in the beginning of uh, my tutorial when I demo it. So let me add my state machine first. I'll add it in bigger number zero. It's a type diff, it's an enum type diff that I call it UART state machine. Then I can just define my enum of this type. I call it my UART state and I initiate it as a start state. And by default, if you don't give a number to the second enum, it's going to be given one, right? But I'll leave it to increment automatically. So this is a definition of our state machine. Uh, I'm going to include this folder down in the description just for you to follow up because I'm going to do a uh, copy paste here quickly at some parts. All right, so that's for this. And then into our Rx callback, and instead of handling this the way it is done right now, we're going to have our states inside here. So I'm going to um, uh, uncomment all of this out. And what's going to happen here is, first, I'm going to do a switch case to do my state machine. So switch off this variable um, that I will call it my Rx buffer of, um, but first I'll still do the same thing. So when I get back to my nodes, I, f I still need to do, um, this this check inside the start so it's going to be my symbol switch case machine so switch and the variable it takes is my state machine variable that i just defined at the top i called it my uart state and it's initially at the start state and this takes only two states you'll get the idea pretty quickly all it's doing is that it's changing between states so in the first case it's going to be my uart start and break and the second one is uh, the second and only set and the last one is um, um, ut app so this is my application or command section so what's happening in the start is that uh, pretty much the same thing i'm starting a three bytes command uh, but in this case it's going to be a three byte initiator or handshaking message just so that to let the steam know how many bytes to listen to for the next command or for the next data all right um, so for this, it will be quite similar to the, what we did initially. We're going to check for the initiator first and third byte. And then we're going to take the middle one as a size of receive. So it's going to look pretty similar. Um, so, so it's going to be this. I want to check for the first and the third byte 
in the start case. If these are correct, then I'm going to uh, print if, uh, prompt the user to send me a command and start receiving a DMA of the specified size and change the state to the app application state. So um, this one, uh, start DMA, start UART rather, DMA receive based on user specified length. A caveat here is that always ensure user requested size uh, don't exceed your uh, buffer size. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to do it uh, on a minimum size. So what I'm gonna check is I'm gonna check if the requested command size so user will send the size in the index number one. If this one is um, less or equal than my size of Rx buffer, I'm gonna go on with it. Otherwise, I'm gonna send in an invalid request as for additional safety of your application. You'll find this very, very useful. If you're a student or anybody who just started using UART to communicate with the PC, you'll find this one will eliminate a lot of the problems that might appear later in your application, such as hard faults or unexpected failures. All right, so uh, if everything is okay, I'm gonna start on how UART uh, received the DMA. Uh, very similar thing, but I'm receiving the Rx specified uh, size. All right, so it's gonna be my Rx buffer again similar to what we used in here. Um, so I'll in, in fact copy this over because it's the same one, but the size is different. So instead of three bytes, now it's gonna be the size specified by this uh, user requested one. Um, else, I'm just going to um, ignore the request. Um, so I'm gonna send um, an invalid command. Well, in fact, let me send a valid here first. So this is gonna be printf. Um, send command. So this to prompt the user to send me the command or data that he want to send um, in case of success. And I want to change the state to uh, the application state. So the next time we receive data, it's, it's not going to come to this state. It's going to go to the application state where we're going to handle the uh, application in a bit. So this is going to go to the application state if everything is okay. In case of failure, it's going to print invalid size and start the procedure all over again. So it's going to start with the same thing. It's going to start from receiving the initiator packet and it's going to ignore all the application packet. All right. Um, so uh, back onto my notes really quickly. So that's how it's done. We're receiving a DMA, changing the states. And if it's invalid, then we start the uh, buffer operation again. Um, and then similarly, this is for the internal if and for the external else too. So if it send a three bytes, but they're invalid, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So we're gonna tell the user it's an invalid command here and start receiving the initiator all over again and don't change the state. Now for the application state, the way we're gonna handle it is that I'm gonna define a function that handles the application. All right, so let me define my function. It's called application handling function. I'll just copy it over because I defined it initially. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'll explain it to you. It's very self-explanatory. Let me copy it over. And begin number four. And I also need to define this function prototype at the very beginning. So function, uh, function prototype section, it's, uh, I call it application handling. And uh, I can see some errors there. This function is using some of the string library function. So I need to define the string header file at the top. So I need to include string.h to be able to use the string string function. Right, so all this function is doing is that is receiving my row packet that user sent and is checking. If it's equal to LED on, then it's gonna turn LED on. If it's LED off, then turn a lead off. Otherwise, it's gonna send an invalid command to the user. All right, so what I need to do here is that I need to pass in my Rx buffer, the user specified Rx buffer to this function, 
and this function is going to process it and after I do this I'm going to reset my uh, received buffer to zero so that I don't leave any garbage data there all right and it's going to be size of the buffer itself and I'm filling it with zeros again this is for safety uh, and this will implement my application in your case you can have a very complex application of receiving data from a PC sending data over or things like that you can do whatever you want with this uh, structure but in my case I'm just doing a very simple uh, LED on and off just to demonstrate the case of having dynamic size commands and possibly dynamic data too all right and then once we're done with this we reset our rx buffer so that next time when we receive data it's not going to contain any garbage from the previous message now we can just um, get back to state one get back to state one and start receiving initiator message all over again and for that we're going to do the um, how you are received dma to open up the dma again and change the state to um, our start state again all right, so it's going to be my UART start state here. Okay, let's just double check with our node and exactly. So we um, receive three bytes and get back to the state and we break this one. All right, so as simple as this. Let's go over it really quickly just to ensure we haven't missed anything. At the very beginning in our main, we start receiving the three bytes initiator message at this case. And then um, if they are valid, if they contain this star in the first byte and this hash in the third, we take the middle one as the size of the next command and then jump into the application. We do some error handling here, okay? And then on application, we call in our application handling function that all it's gonna do is yeah, it's gonna turn a lady on and request and tell user that we turned it on or off and um, also uh, do some error handling in case command is not part of these. All right, so let's compile the code, load it to the board and uh, do a quick first test. And hopefully you haven't missed anything. All right, so back onto the terminal and we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but this time uh, I'm gonna send an LED on which is a six bytes command. So I need to tell the STM that we are, that I'm sending a six bytes with this initiator message. And I'm sending it as a number. Let me first reset my STM. Uh, all right, one moment. Let me reflash the code. For some reason, I don't see my uh, message here. So I'm gonna also reopen the terminal, uh, reset my STM, and sure enough, starting my application. And when I send this, it's prompted me to send my own command. When I send it as an ASCII, sure enough, it says LED turned on. And indeed on the board, my green LED came on. And now I'm gonna send the LED off command, uh, which is a seven bytes command. When I send it, uh, it prompted me to send my command. And sure enough, I send it and my LED came off too. And when I send any other invalid command, let's say uh, OBB, whatever, send the number, send the command, it's an invalid command. All right, when I send any rubbish data here, it's invalid command again. All right, so it's doing all the error handling correctly. All right, so that's everything I wanted to show you today. You will find this skill extremely useful if you're connecting your STM to a PC application. So this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. Thank you for watching and as always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.